Welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm Corey, your host, and this is the episode for the week starting April 30th, 2012. This week's episode will cover three general topics, Microsoft's upcoming patch day, some interesting malware from the week, and a few updates to some previous stories. Let's dive right in with details about Microsoft's upcoming patch day. As they do every month, uh, Microsoft plans to release their monthly security bulletins next Tuesday. According to their advance notification, they're going to release seven security bulletins, fixing around 23 vulnerabilities in products including Windows, Office, and some development packages including the .NET Framework and Silverlight. Microsoft rates three of these bulletins as critical and the rest as important. Until next Tuesday, we won't know a lot about these vulnerabilities, but there seems to be a lean towards some Office vulnerabilities, and I suspect Microsoft will be fixing a lot of document parsing flaws in Office. So things like Word documents, Visio documents, and Excel documents uh, that if you run, they may cause malicious code to run on your computer. So if you're a Microsoft administrator, be sure to follow along Tuesday and try to uh, test and apply these Microsoft patches as quickly as you can. Next up, let's talk about some new malware from the week. The big theme of security stories this week seemed to be interesting new malware that various groups had discovered over the week. The first example is some cross-platform malware discovered by various antivirus vendors. Over the week, a few antivirus vendors discovered a piece of malware that was exploiting a Java vulnerability, specifically the same Java flaw that the Mac malware we've been talking about, Flashback, used in some previous examples. But in this case, this new malware exploited that Java flaw both on Windows and Macintosh platforms. What it did next was try to detect what OS it was running on. And basically, if it detected it was running on a Nix-like or a Macintosh platform, it would then download a malicious Python script, whereas if it detected it was running on a PC platform, it would then download a malicious EXE. So in short, this Java malware worked against both Windows and Mac PCs. Chances are, if you run AV on your Mac PC or even on your gateway device, and you keep it regularly updated, it will catch this malware. But I'll also mention it's very important to keep Java patched and up to date to make sure it doesn't suffer from flaws that attackers can use. Next up is an interesting piece of ransomware. For those that don't know, ransomware is a class of malware that tries to lock up or do something on your computer to make it so that you can't access documents or you can't use your computer, and then tries to extort you for money to get your computer back. This week there's a new piece of ransomware that wasn't technically all that interesting, but had an interesting new social engineering hook. This ransomware was delivered from uh, websites that were hijacked with drive-by download code. If you get infected with this malware, it will start displaying messages that appear to come from the Computer Crimes and Intellectual Property section of the U.S. Department of Justice. Uh, these messages claim that they've been detecting your computer either uh, doing child pornography or, or stealing uh, intellectual property. And they'll say that if you don't want to go to court or get in trouble, you have to pay a $100 fine. Of course, this isn't true at all. This is just malware. Again, the good news is if you're using AV either on your client or gateway, there are signatures for this malware. So as usual, be sure to keep your antivirus up to date. The last piece of interesting malware, or at least interesting malware attacks I would like to cover, is the first ever Android drive-by download malware. According to a mobile security company calling themselves Lookout, uh, they detected the first ever Android drive-by download malware. Again, a drive-by download is when you go to a website which automatically downloads something on your computing platform. In this case, Lookout found some iframes on certain websites that would force Android devices to automatically download an Android package. This Android package pretended to be a security update. Now, the good news is, like all Android packages, when this first tries to install, you will get a pop-up asking you whether you need to accept this, this package or not. Uh, the bad news is, since it masquerades as an update, it might trick many users into accidentally installing this. 
As far as the malware's payload goes, it doesn't look too dangerous yet. It seems to be a TCP proxy that might allow attackers to connect through your device. Nonetheless, you certainly don't want this on your Android device. You might start thinking about using antivirus software on your mobile devices like your Androids. More importantly, always be careful what you download and where you download things from. So let's finish off with some updates to some previous stories. I'll try to make this pretty quick. Last week I told you about an attacker that claimed to steal VMware source code. Well, this week's update is the attacker now claims that he will release that source code on Saturday, May 10th. So we'll keep an eye on that to see what happens. Again, there's no definite security ramification to this source code leaking, uh, other than the fact that maybe now more eyes can look at it looking for security vulnerabilities. So if you're a VMware user, you should definitely keep track of this story to see whether or not you need to patch your hypervisor in the future. Next, I want to cover two quick flashback updates. Again, flashback is that Mac malware that's been spreading among many, many Macs. The first update is uh, Dr. Webb has found a new variant of flashback malware that uses an interesting new command and control protocol. This flashback variant actually falls back on Twitter as its command and control. The malware does use other command and control mechanisms first, but if for any reason it can't gain access to the servers in those ways, it will fall back to sending Twitter messages to try to regain control. Another quick update I want to share is just uh, anecdotal evidence of how widespread flashback really is. This week, Oxford University's IT department released a public blog post talking about uh, their effort to actually fight this Mac malware and how much this particular variant of Mac malware has affected their network. So this Oxford blog post goes a long way to show normal people that this Mac malware really is spreading. I'll be sure to include it in the link section of this post. The last quick update has to do with the recent Oracle patch day from this month. As you know, a while back Oracle released their, their quarterly patch day and fixed about 88 vulnerabilities. However, this week we learned that one of the vulnerabilities that they, they said they fixed, or they at least talked about in their advisory, a vulnerability in the TNS listener for the Oracle databases, wasn't actually fixed. And the reason this came to light is the particular researcher that was credited for fixing this, he saw Oracle's advisory, thought they had fixed his flaw, so he released his advisory that included exploit code for this very, very dangerous vulnerability. But shortly after that, he realized that this really wasn't fixed in, in Oracle's update, and he had just released a zero-day exploit for this, this particular vulnerability. The good news is a few days after that realization and during this week, Oracle then released another patch update fixing this, this serious TNS listener issue. So if you're an Oracle administrator, even though you already applied their patches from, from the month, be sure to check out their latest advisory, which fixes this particular flaw. That covers the biggest security stories this week. As usual, if you like more regular security updates, be sure to check out our blog. It's at watchguardsecuritycenter.com. And you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at secadept. As usual, thanks for watching. And at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.